welcome back to the week. I'm Daryl Breen. Joining me this week are Nish Kumar, Kerry Godleyman and Ed Gamble, Rachel Paris, Hugh Dennis and Ed Byrne. We start with a round called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what is happening. So, what's going on here? <laughs> is Jeremy Corbyn just leaning in and saying, muzzle tough? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Jeremy Corbyn is saying, let go of my tie, people are looking. <laughs> I think Jeremy's simply saying there's one episode left. It's about a bodyguard having an affair with the Home Secretary. You've got to binge watch. <laughs> Is John McDonnell saying cock or ball? <laughs> that clearly looks like a cardboard cutout of John McDonnell that Corbyn is just there going, John! <laughs> John! <laughs> what do you want for lunch? <laughs> yeah. I know that face. That is the face of someone who's left their straighteners on. <laughs> This is John McDonald's offensive impression of a blind guy in a BBC One drama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're right, it, it, it was poorly judged on his part. Yeah. I think. <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn's just looking at John McDonald again. This organisation does not tolerate failure. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you what it is, I can tell you what? the actual answer. As far as I'm aware, that is Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonald. Oh, thank you very much. Oh. You're absolutely right. <laughs> yes, this is Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn, pictured with Shadow Chancellor John McDonald. This week, rumours emerge that McDonald's allies have been secretly plotting against Corbyn. McDonald has dismissed these rumours as laughable. So, did you read about this? They're rumours, Dara. We don't comment on rumours. <laughs> but let's about Donald Trump. I hear he has a yeah. penis like a mushroom. <laughs> Literally, at the very end of the notes I had, how long until Trump's penis get mentioned? Uh, <laughs> a bravo! Ding, ding! Uh, you got straight in there, yes. They, uh, but yes, are we all agog with the excitement? Well, there's the... always been a rivalry between them, hasn't there? Because Corbyn has an allotment and Old MacDonald has a farm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but do you think, is there, is there an end to which maybe some people in Labour are noticing that they're not making an enormous amount of ground at the moment on a Conservative Party who looked like a clown car driven by a scared librarian? <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, the Labour Party. The Labour Party, <laughs> yes. Because they will be watching you. You're watching, aren't yeah, you? You're watching yeah. and you're going to tweet us if we say anything mean about the Labour Party. Because we said you'll tweet us last week and you tweeted us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was fantastic ones. I did a number of people who said, actually, darling, I'm very, I'm very, just very disappointed. Uh, and I'm going, you're not my mum. Uh, <laughs> somebody tweeted, so it's going, that's this Corbyn's border, never watching that programme again. I do not enjoy being mocked. Uh, <laughs> 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 Where has one of Jeremy Corbyn's closest aides been banned from? Spearmint hmm? Rhino. Not from Spearmint Rhino. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ukraine, isn't it? It is the Ukraine, But yes. what was weird about it was I thought he must have tried to get into Ukraine and then been told he couldn't come in. But no, he's never been to Ukraine. Yep. He has no interest in going to the Ukraine. <laughs> but he's been banned from the Ukraine... Yes. ..by the Ukraine. His name is Andrew Murray. Uh, he is an advisor to Corbyn, works for a day and a half a week for Jeremy Corbyn. And he is Wimbledon champion. He's not that Andy Murray. <laughs> Because he'd come out and tell us, he'd explain to us. Because uh, he was regarded as being as too pro-Putin um, by the Ukrainian government. It's not going to affect his life much, is it? So, yeah, it's like... It's like me being banned from Chessington World of Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really going to make a great uh, deal of... Was... Do you not want to Would go to Chessington life? World of Adventure? No, I do quite like the idea, actually. <laughs> Because they've got like a log film that goes through the tiger enclosure. I mean, you really don't want to be banned. They don't have yeah. that in the Ukraine. With the best will in the world to the Ukraine, unless I'm wrong. And then the Ukraine tweets me and goes, "We are very disappointed <laughs> with you." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for many years, our film has passed tiger. <laughs> Sorry, is there, is there a meerkat in the bush? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't he accused of being part of Putin's global uh, propaganda? Propaganda. Machine, yeah. And he's like, "Well, I've never met Trump." <laughs> <laughs> So, just to point out, for all we know, every single one of us is also banned from the Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, There's checked. no way of knowing. There is no way of knowing. I'm no, sure they'll tell us. The, uh, well, I'm a bit worried now that I might be banned from Chessington World of Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to regret that, Joe, can't you? 
They don't like being mocked. I didn't mean... No, they don't. <laughs> One of, the, one of the tigers in the lock room is going, I <laughs> roar. <laughs> 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 She's Jessica to London Adventures, from what I remember, isn't that a theme park? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my what God. Is that? <laughs> Yes. yes, they also I... have a small zoo there well, as well. We, we yes. should go! <laughs> 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 I, I, genuinely, I genuinely think that's a very good idea. I just don't think I'll be able to join. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 can we, can we all stop bigging up Chesting a World of Adventures with your usual bloody anti-Alton Towers BBC <laughs> fight? Yeah, <laughs> uh, in other news, what's going on here? <laughs> Is that uh, Michael Gove at the worst bit of Chessington World of Adventures? <laughs> <laughs> if that cow doesn't like being mocked, it's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Was this taken just before Gove's horrific attempt to go one further than David Cameron? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's what you applaud. <laughs> Is Gove saying, look, I already said this country has had enough of experts, now someone help me get on this horse. <laughs> <laughs> Is he...? He's probably going, oh... Sod it, I'll have my coffee black. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Hindu, so all of this cow mockery is very much against my religious beliefs. <laughs> I think is that Boris point... Johnson ready for panto? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is actually just very sad. It's just his only friend. <laughs> What has Gove urged Tories MP to do this week? He's, he's urged people to give the Chequers plan a go for yep. now. And mm. then they'll mop up the mess later. For now. Absolutely, yeah, yeah for yeah, now. He, or for now, yeah. He basically said, he's, he's gone on TV. And in front of him, just gone, yeah, just sign up to her, tell you, we can just wriggle out of it later. And he's just said it, like, <laughs> in front of everybody. And it's all together, I'm like, you realise the other people are listening. <laughs> it's never a good way, like, it's like starting a marriage with, like, well, we'll stick with this for now. <laughs> we'll what are you indicating <laughs> there, a, this whole lot of uh, spouse. It's like <laughs> moving your husband's body parts yes. around. Yeah. Yeah. They're all right there for now, but we can just pop them up now. to your chest. That'd be a lot more helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Who has Vince Cable suggested he wants to succeed him as leader of the Liberal Democrats? Liberal Democrats! Oh! Yay! Yeah, we've got her. Oh, I'm not hurting the What the fuck? How is many that? constellations? <laughs> it's quite a tie. It's quite the tie. Dora, are you presenting Vince Cable's tie? Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm pleased to um, announce Vince Cable wants me to replace him as leader of the Liberal Democrats. I'm retiring from show business, and in fact, I'm retiring from public life entirely and becoming leader <laughs> of the Liberal Democrats. <laughs> the thing is, he's only stepping down when Brexit's sorted, so I look forward to 300 years' time where the Lib Dems are led by the ghost of Vince Cable. <laughs> <laughs> If they did a second vote, if they did do a second referendum on Brexit, right? And mm. like, I mean, obviously, if, if they said, right, this is why, this, this is the deal we have. Let's have the vote, okay? Whether that's you think it's a good idea or not. If it did get rejected, right? Say if the morning after and, and people said, actually, no, we've decided, we've seen the deal, not good enough. We voted to remain, right? What happens? The next, do we all just go, oh, <laughs> 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 just never speak of this again? <laughs> That round. The points go to Ed, Hugh and Rachel! <laughs> now we play a round called A Visit to Lulsbury Cathedral. <laughs> this game... <laughs> ...involves Ed Byrne and Ed Gamble. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round's a stand-up challenge. I launch a wheel of news and whoever chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is courage. Who's coming out? Ed Gamble. There it is, the uh, traditional representation of courage. <laughs> uh, I got called a pussy the other day. <laughs> You're all just going to sit there and go, y yeah. <laughs> but no, right, I agree with the sentiment, I don't agree with the choice of word. I think that is a wrong choice of word to use, cos essentially what that person was saying is they were saying, I think you're so cowardly, I feel justified in comparing you to the vagina. <laughs> I think that is very unfair on the vagina. <laughs> there is nothing cowardly about that thing. That is the bravest thing in the universe. It pushes whole humans out of it. <laughs> Words aren't used to describe that. Hardy. <laughs> Rugged. 
It's the biological equivalent of a Timberland boot. <laughs> what do we use when we want to talk about bravery? The balls. They got balls. Big balls. I think that's wrong, cos I can only speak for my own balls, but they shy away from any sign of danger. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't even have to be a dangerous situation. It can just be a slightly cold bath. <laughs> You're like, oh, I'm ready for this bath. Here I go down to the water's edge. They're having none of it. They're like, before they even get to the meniscus, absolutely not! Climb back inside him! <laughs> go, 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 go! Don't forget the bag! Don't forget the bag! <laughs> fold it up! Fold up the bag real tight! <laughs> My balls are pussies. <laughs> OK, that leaves us with Ed Byrne. Let's see what your topic is. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is parenting. <laughs> Don't you think she looks like she wants him to put that kid down? <laughs> right, um, yeah, my wife and I have adopted a style of parenting known as spoiling the shit out of the little bastard. <laughs> we are spoiling our kids rotten. We a couple of Christmases ago, right, December 2016, just before Christmas, we took our children to Lapland to visit Santa Claus. <laughs> you know the guy we made up? Yeah? <laughs> you know that not real person that we invented to take credit for the shit we buy our children? Well, we got on a plane and flew to another country <laughs> to visit a fictional character. <laughs> I can never make fun of people for going to Lourdes ever again. <laughs> We spent the price of a decent skiing holiday going on... Yes, I did say that. That's how posh we are in our house now. <laughs> we spent the price of a decent skiing holiday going on a wild goose chase for two nights and three days to Lapland, run around after all these actors, pretend to be elves, leading us on all these little mini-adventures to find clues. To... I, actually, I love this. I, <laughs> I was so caught up, and by the end of the second day, I'm, go I'm turning to my wife going, God, I hope we're going to get to meet Santa Claus. <laughs> it's like, are you an idiot, are you? <laughs> We're going to meet Santa Claus. That's happening. It's a dead search. We paid to meet Santa Claus. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> but on the second night, Mrs. Claus came to the hotel room and read the kids a bedtime story. Who knew Mrs. Claus was a scouser? <laughs> <laughs> and then on the third day, on the way to the airport, we found him. We tracked him down. He was at his workshop. Should have looked there in the first place. Could have saved a fortune. <laughs> and he, he was a really good Santa Claus. He was like, the beard looked real. He was the right level of fat. He didn't stink of fags. <laughs> It was great, and I wanted to blow their minds. I wanted to be the most amazing moment of their young lives. So as we're leaving, I go, how cool was that? We got to meet Santa Claus. And the two of them look at me and go, mm. <laughs> <laughs> that, That's not enough. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's, that's just... I know you don't appreciate how much this all cost, <laughs> but we've been running around in the snow now for 72 hours and not a feckin' ski was put on, so... <laughs> I'm going to ask you again, and this time I want to see a bit more wonder in your beautiful little faces. <laughs> we got to meet Santa Claus, the man himself. How awesome is that? And the two of them are just like, yeah, but we met him last year at Westfield Shopping Centre. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And the points are given and go to... Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Rachel, which category would you like? I will take home news, please. OK, cool. Your category is home news. The answer is snow, trains and perfume. What is the question? Is it, um, what does Vladimir Putin put down his pants to make him feel manly? <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it just some of the reasons that Southern Rail have cancelled trains? <laughs> <laughs> Is it quite simply, what do the ladies love? <laughs> <laughs> what other characters were considered before Rice Krispies settled on Snap, Crackle and Pop? <laughs> Is it what were three excuses I gave to skive out of work when I had a proper job? Snowed in, trains aren't working, smell too good might distract my co-workers. <laughs> <laughs> three what? things uh... you should never lick. <laughs> <laughs> What if we started stockpiling in case of a no deal? <laughs> <laughs> Is it what are the most enjoyable things to we in? 
Um, right, any more attempts? Yeah. Is yes. it name three things Katie Hopkins can't afford anymore? <laughs> Uh, what's the technical term for when you come fart and poop all at the same time? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> when do you ever not fart and poop at the same... Do you ever...? I don't think that's the difficult part of that trifecta. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't think that's the surprise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because if you come and fart at the same time, you do a backflip. My friend Will told me that. <laughs> You want the answer? Uh, yes, you can have the answer, please. Is it what are the three things that are kind of featured in the story of the Russian poisoners in Salisbury? Of course it is. Thank you very much, you. <laughs> the question I've ever was, what were three of the excuses offered up by the two suspects implicated in the Salisbury Novichok poisoning? Alexander Petrov and Roslan Bosharov appeared on Russian state television to give outlandish explanations as to why they visited the UK in March and then denied that they had any involvement in the nerve agent attack. So what did they claim? They just love Britain. <laughs> <laughs> and if they'd had another half hour left after their attempted poisoning, they would have joined the National Trust. <laughs> <laughs> Way to Stonehenge as well. Well, they said, but they, the snow, the snow, these two men who've lived in Siberia, they said the snow was too oppressive in March. <laughs> yeah. I don't think those are their real names, are they? They sound really made up. They might as well have called them sort of Spidey McPoison Face and <laughs> I've a bottle of Novikov, or what is it called? <laughs> Novikov. Yeah, it's called Novikov. <laughs> <laughs> are, <laughs> are you thinking of the famous by Huja Nikobolikov? <laughs> 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 It's taking me back. <laughs> what was the dinosaur one as well? Oh, do you think he saw us? Uh... <laughs> The, uh, yes, they claim they went to Wiltshire to see Stonehenge and Salisbury Cathedral's world-famous 123 metre spa because their friends kept going on at them about it. Yeah. Kept going, you, you must go to Wiltshire. Uh, <laughs> oh, is, is there another meerkat? There's a meerkat. Yeah, a tiny little friend would go, go to Wiltshire, but do not drive without insurance. <laughs> <laughs> The mistake they made, though, is that they obviously were just rubbish, weren't they? But they didn't realise that we have, like, a, a functioning border force, police force, security service and uh, NHS. <laughs> and if they'd just waited till after breakfast... <laughs> They would have got away with it. My favourite thing about it was the fact that they quoted in the interview they wanted to see the 123-metre-tall spire, and it was like they were reading it off the Wikipedia page. Like, it's a bit like if I just went to you, hey, Dara, great to hang out with you, Dara O'Brien, born 4th February 1972. <laughs> you really looked that up for this, didn't you? <laughs> I did a lot of Wikipediaing. Ed was the finalist in the 2007 Chortle Student Comedy Awards, and Kerry also appeared in a 2011 Bird's Eye Polar Bear advert for their new Frozen King prawns. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy times. <laughs> Rachel Paris holds a second class, 2 1, Music BA Ons from the University of Oxford. <laughs> Why didn't you cat my bird's eye out? <laughs> 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 Nobody says about me, it says Hugh has been banned from Chessington World. <laughs> It says that uh, you were uh, your first one of your early televisual appearances was on Blind Date, which I didn't know, Ed. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. And it also said Hugh didn't get picked. Didn't get. <laughs> oh, you, you I couldn't let that go. Could you? <laughs> didn't get picked. That wasn't that wasn't going on said, was it? I have never seen you go more Irish than that. <laughs> I'm <laughs> just saying that, like, you went on blind date and failed. Uh, and, and you're doing your old cheeky thing with your long hair and all that, like, and yeah. Uh, yeah, you're gonna but this with is... my long hair, baldy. <laughs> 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 to be fair, this is exactly the sort of journalistic rigour I'd expect from the co-founder and co-editor of UCD's University Observer College newspaper. All right. <laughs> Still going, mate, Chang. That's quite my... That's my legacy you're talking about there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And now, somebody look up Nish now, right? <laughs> just, there's just a, it just says Nish Kumar and there's a hyperlink to Ramesh Ranganathan. <laughs> 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 The spies, the, the uh, sorry, not spies, the Russian. <laughs> 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 
these uh, cathedral enthusiasts, um, they got asked if they went near the house of the victim and they replied with the um, notoriously innocent sounding phrase, maybe we did and maybe we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> to make yourself sound trustworthy. <laughs> yeah. Also, they are somewhat hamstrung by the fact that they look like two people who have gone to a Halloween party dressed as suspicious Russian spies. <laughs> <laughs> they were both picked before Ed in Blind Death. <laughs> okay, in other news... Who has been accused of eating too many pizzas and hamburgers this week? It's a load of South Koreans, isn't it? It's a load of South Koreans. Why would they do such a thing? Because they're trying to avoid national service and they worked out that if you got really large... Didn't they put on, like, 30 kilos? They put on 30 kilograms in six months, yeah. Yeah. And then were turned down for national service. Yeah, for being, yeah, for being too fat for national service, yeah. Lots of people do. You know, Donald Trump avoided it by saying he'd got bone spurs on his heel. That's how he... Whereas he should just have told the truth and said he was a maniac who shouldn't be allowed anywhere near a weapon. <laughs> He has a condition known as mushroom cock. <laughs> <laughs> if I heard this correctly, it wasn't a, a real mushroom. It was the mushroom character in Super Mario Kart, It was right? Mr Toad from... Mr uh, Toad. From, uh, yes, it was, yeah. Right, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. So not only is it small and bulbous, it's also got a face. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and it drives really well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really want that reminding me. The next time I'm playing Mario Kart with my kids, it's like, no, no. <laughs> Just pick somebody else. Just pick somebody else. Why, Daddy? Just pick somebody else! <laughs> <laughs> what would be your number one uh, cartoon comparison for a cock? Mine looks like Car from The Jungle Book. <laughs> 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 Mine is like uh, Wally from the film Wally. Uh, <laughs> it's always kind of tidying up around the place. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, where's Wally? Like, where is it? <laughs> 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 I'm laughing along to hide the hurt. Uh, <laughs> and, and that's the story of the Koreans' escape. <laughs> 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 this is a nice story. I think the story of, like, 12 friends getting together to, like, overeat in a lovely sort of body positive... Yeah. It's like, it's the feel-good hit of the summer, I think, isn't it? It's really lovely. The problem is they've set a precedent now and now everyone's going to do it and there's going to be a dominoes effect. <laughs> <laughs> Now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics. <laughs> and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. <laughs> OK, here we go. The first subject is lines you wouldn't hear in a superhero movie. <laughs> I am Thor. And next year, I will be five. <laughs> I've got you now, Catwoman. Your days of sitting on laptops and licking your own hole are over. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I green? Well, I'm made of kale. I am the inedible Hulk. <laughs> Ah, Superman. We meet at la... I, I can literally see your pants. <laughs> Don't you call me a wanker. You're a wanker yourself. That's right. I'm White Van Man. <laughs> I'm Batman. Nice to... <laughs> I'm Batman. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Yes, Peter, I know you're Spider-Man, but that definitely isn't web all over your laptop screen. <laughs> right, I'm Captain Marvel and you're Captain America. One of us is going to have to tell Captain Birdseye he's not in this game. <laughs> His whole place stinks of fish! <laughs> is it a bird? Is it a plane? This pilot's exam is harder than I was expecting. <laughs> I have collected all the Infinity Stones, and I believe that means I'm entitled to a free coffee. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Fantastic Four! Oh, no, it was stopped on the boundary, just a single. <laughs> <laughs> a full-body titanium suit with armour plating? 
No, thank you. I'll stick to this small metal bikini. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Spider-Man, yeah. Uh, no, no, I've got an STI. So when you say you were swinging around New York, what exactly did you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner, you sent for me. Yes, Human Torch. I need to find something in the shed. <laughs> <laughs> I prescribed 50 milligrams of cheese and 60 cc's of cat hair. Benedict Cumberbatch is Doctor Strange. <laughs> They call me Catwoman cos I've got fur all over me. I stink of whiskers and cat piss. <laughs> Batman, come quickly. A Thai football team is stuck in the Batcave. <laughs> Why so serious? Oh, right, cos I'm a scary clown with weird makeup and I'm holding a knife. Fair enough. <laughs> I Thor, I Thor a puddy tat. <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is unlikely agony aunt letters. Dear Deirdre, I heard that there is a way to get red wine out of carpets. Please tell me because I really want some red wine. <laughs> Boyfriend says, I'm obsessed with quizzes. Shall I, A, leave him, B, seek help, C, carry on with my obsession? <laughs> Dear Deirdre, I have an irrational fear of agony ants. Please don't respond. <laughs> Dear Deirdre, I don't get on with my partner's children. Uh, they're my children as well, but I don't admit that because they're absolute dicks. <laughs> I'm a man in his 50s struggling with his work-life balance. Should I...? Sorry, got to go. <laughs> Help! I'm in love with my wife's mother's daughter. Oh, no, wait, that's my wife. It's OK, fine. <laughs> <laughs> All that emotional stuff, is that agony? Once caught my bollocks in a lift door. <laughs> I can't help putting my bike in other ladies' racks. Lovely Boris. <laughs> Dear Deirdre, last week I had a car accident and now my girlfriend isn't speaking to me and she cries all the time and I feel really cold. Oh, shit, I'm a ghost! <laughs> <laughs> Dear Deirdre, I'm embarrassed by the amount of noise my wife makes during lovemaking. To be fair, she doesn't know I'm still in the house. <laughs> My girlfriend says I give up on things too easily. Oh, well. <laughs> Since my children left to go to university, my life feels so meaningful and rich. How do I tell them I don't want them to come home for Christmas? <laughs> Dear Deirdre, my wife says I'm a fantasist and a compulsive liar. Well, she's one to talk. She doesn't even exist. <laughs> I'm a man trapped inside the body of a woman. It happened last night, neither of us dare call an ambulance. <laughs> Dear Deirdre, I am very into steeples. <laughs> Dear Deirdre, my girlfriend reckons I should try and set a world record for masturbation. Do you think I can pull it off? <laughs> Dear Deirdre, in the daytime I come across as a really smart, cheerful guy who everyone loves, but in secret I am definitely a psychopath. Yours, Nish Kumar. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Deirdre, my wife says that I'm a serial philanderer and a sex addict, so I guess my question is, what are you doing tonight? <laughs> uh, I just got my first period. Should I be worried? Dave, 32. <laughs> At the end of that round, the point's going to end. Carry it near! <laughs> and that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Nish Kumar, Kerry Gardner and Ed Gamble. <laughs> Commissioner.
Congratulations to Rachel Barrett, Hugh Dennis and Edburn. Thanks for watching. I'm Gar Green. Good night.